Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we ask, has pro cycling screwed itself? And a very hot topic here in the UK. Should police crack down on fixies with no brakes? Sorry, when people see the new Shimano Ultegra, everyone is going to want brakes. Mark my word. <laughs> True that. Right, elsewhere in tech, we've got a new bike from Giant, we've got a new power meter, and we've got new hubs. Plus, we take a look at how our very own Johnny Chocolate Voice Bevan got on at the Hope Route. Did he survive? Um, is there a toilet around here, Matt? This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Sir Chris Hoy, very much like us, doesn't think that you should wear white cycling shorts, adding that from the front, he thinks men look like a percentage symbol. Valid point, yeah. I think. And also, despite Chris Hoy being one of the nicest people around, he's managed to offend a lot of people with that view. He certainly has. Bizarrely. Now, following last week's show, we also learned the reason why most people ride their bikes and why you ride. It's the escape. For 51% of you, 31% of you say that you like the challenge, though. Mm. And 12%, which I think is quite a high number, well, very much like Tom Lars, they ride their bikes because of the pain and because of the suffering. That's a lot of masochists out there. That is it? remarkable, isn't it? And we also learned this week that professional cycling is as unforgiving as ever because unfortunately the Candel Drapak team announced that they were struggling with budget problems for 2018. Basically, a potential major sponsor has apparently pulled out at the last moment, leaving the team with a $7 million hole to fill for 2018. Yeah, it's not a good situation at all. No. There's 100 people whose jobs could be at risk, including lots of talented young riders who could be left without contracts, therefore potentially prematurely ending their careers. Yeah. Again, a lot of people expressing frustration at the, in quotes, unsustainable business model of professional cycling. But actually, has pro cycling screwed itself? Have budgets got too big simply for the available sponsors? Yeah, well, the big teams, well, they're able to stack the roster with the best riders, inflate salaries in the first instance to attract those riders there, plus they've got the best equipment and the most superior backup as well. Yeah, and there is, of course, no limit to their budgets, yeah. is there? Meanwhile, smaller teams have less talent or they have spiralling wage bills, or in fact, they have both. So why not have a budget cap? That could potentially mean it would be easier to lure sponsors because the barrier to entry is lower, and that would therefore mean you get more sustainable teams. Hmm. But Chris Froome doesn't seem to think so. Unsurprisingly. Yeah, he said at a press conference at the Vuelta that continuing to strive for big sponsors and bigger budgets is just a part of the sport, and if you took that away, in his words, it would be like being a communist. I don't really agree with that. It's got to be said. I mean, surely the point of pro cycling is actually to entertain the fans. And I think a super team could, and I stress could, ultimately undermine that. Because if you have a bigger budget, bigger team, bigger riders, more victories, that leads to bigger sponsors and an even bigger team. Meanwhile, smaller teams just can't compete. They get completely crushed out. They go bust and you end up with one or two teams dominating and ultimately that's going to turn fans off, I think. Well, I think that's maybe just a touch pessimistic side because pe yeah. people have been saying for the last 60 years about the over-commercialisation of professional cycling. They have. So I think back to 1985 when essentially the modern era of the sport was ushered in by the Lavie Claire team. Big budget, signed Greg LeMond for a record $1 million. Um, uh, but since then, we've had 32 years of fantastic Road racing. So yeah, we have, yeah. I think big teams pushing are actually good for the sport, but there does need to be a balance. Yeah, yeah, balance is definitely good. For my money, actually, I think it's the races that are probably the most important part of all of this, because as long as you have big races, classic races, the Tour de France, the best riders are going to want to race there. Yeah. And personally, I don't really care whose sponsor's logo is on the jersey. It's all about the riders. As long as the races aren't being dominated and being crushed, then I think that's going to be cool. Yeah, I do tend to agree with your side. But, as ever, we'd love to know what you think. Should yeah. there be some sort of budget cap for professional cycling teams, or should we just leave things as the way they are? Now, we have a poll for you to let us know what your thoughts are, just up here. Yeah, and 
Who knows? Next week we can maybe lobby the UCI with your opinions. I think it's my turn to go to Switzerland. So I think it might be actually, yeah. yeah. And actually, if you can think of a better way, another way to modify pro cycling, then let us know in the comment section down below. We would be very interested to read what you have to think. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, let's keep our fingers crossed for Kendall Drapak. Yeah, definitely. That would be a big loss to the sport. Yeah. It's now time for cycling shorts. Fixie bikes hit the headlines for all the wrong reasons the other day when a person riding a bicycle was convicted of causing bodily harm with wanton and furious cycling, which is a quite archaic bit of British law, when they hit and tragically killed a pedestrian in London who was crossing the road whilst riding a fixie without a front brake or in fact any brake at all. Yeah, now the husband of the victim in this case has actually quite reasonably, we think, asked for a change in the UK law in order to prevent such tragedies from happening again in the future. Understandably as well, this is a hugely emotive subject and it's making some pretty big waves in the UK media at the moment. Yeah, a hell of a lot of anti-cycling and cyclist sentiment to be honest, with which I must admit, I do get. Well, I mean... But sorry, I think we're going to revisit this because it again raises the issue, doesn't it, of how we regulate and legislate for reckless cycling, whilst does, at the same yeah. time keeping ourselves safe from vehicles and other road hazards. Yeah, a tough subject that one. Yeah. Uh, a change of gear now though, and our man John Chocolate Voice Bevan has been, quite frankly, riding the event of his life at the Oak Route Alps recently, and he is He's too tired to film today, yeah. uh, so actually, Matt and, I, Matt and I are having to do it ourselves. Yeah. And he switch it on. Is that on? So get me in frame. Uh, is that it? Is that looking okay? Woo. Welcome to the GCN show. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. So we're clearly not filming we ourselves. We, turn it on, could we? No, we couldn't work it out. I've got to say, it's been an absolutely amazing week. There were times where I thought I wouldn't be able to finish it. Uh, it's amazing the power of the mind power of uh, other people helping you on as well. It's been an absolutely fantastic experience. Today was just a rolling hilly stage. Um, I just emptied the tank today, uh, gave everything I had left and uh, came up with a pretty decent time. It was actually, you know, probably my best day. And that's pretty much it. So stay tuned for a bigger mass edit from Oak Route Alps in the next couple of weeks. Good lad, John. You know, yeah, what a hero, good. what a hero. Now, Matt, there have been loads, loads of great fish puns coming in on the GCN show again last week. Aidan Morley said uh, he always thought there was something fishy about Sam and Sanchez. Sorry, can we just stop carping on? <laughs> no, seriously, mate, you say that. But Genius Mike One said that although these puns are not the sole reason he watches GCN, he does puffer the channel with them. Sorry, seriously, mate, these have got to stop. Otherwise, I'm going to bring back some more Mario Nipolini. Okay, all right, all right. you made your point. Park it. You made your point. Here is something very cool with no fish puns. Okay. Mr. Mark Beaumont, still on track. He's currently riding across Canada and on schedule to circumnavigate the globe still in just 80 days. But what is extra brilliant this week is that actually there's been loads of GCM viewers out en route giving him support and indeed supplying him with cookies and brownies. That's cool, isn't it? Isn't it? Amazing. Let's hear from Mark. Hello GCN, quick catch up, uh, this time from Alberta. So I'm in leg three of the Artemis World Cycle, trying to get around the planet in 80 days. And today's day 58. Still very much on target, but um, North America has been tough so far. So I landed in Anchorage and I've come down the Alcan Highway, the Alaska Canadian Highway, just wilderness up there, riding through herds of wood bison, bears on the roadside, uh, just epic landscapes. Um, in the first five days I did about 70 hours of riding through just a corridor of trees. Um, so the first week was over 3,000 metres climbing a day, so pretty punchy. And it started to flatten out since I've now come across the Continental Divide and across the Rockies um, into Alberta. So I think today is my last um, day with any sort of decent climbing, I think about two, two and a half thousand metres. And then I really hit the flatlands, hit the prairies and I hope I've got the tailwinds because yeah, I've lost a bit of time, I lost about a quarter of a day in terms of mileage, so if I can make that up over the next week that would be, um, that would be superb. So I'm now, well, tomorrow I'll be three quarters of the way around the world. So we're into the final three weeks of the race around the planet. Hope everyone's enjoying following it. Loads of people have been joining me on the road and tons of them have heard about it through GCN, so thanks for the coverage. There's still plenty of interesting transfer talk around, even oh. without 
the potential riders from Candel Drapout being on the market. And the first of which is uh, Domenico Pozzavivo. He's going to swap the brown, blue, and white of AG2R for the gold and red of Bahrain Merida. For the Good next move two years. for sartorial reasons, uh, if none other. Yeah, De definitely. I'm not a big fan of the brown shorts, as we well know. Also, a couple of interesting moves Ben Hermans and Ruben Plaza from BMC and Orica, respectively. Well, they're moving over to the Israeli Cycling Academy oh, yeah. because of their intention potentially to ride a Grand Tour next year. And finally, Agent Jack Bauer. Well, he's going to be looking after the Orica Scott boys for the next two years. Keeping them safe. Quick step floors, yeah. That's right. You know what? If Israeli Cycling Academy do ride a Grand Tour, that means our mate Dan Craven may well end up dragging himself around, and his beard, in fact, around another Grand Tour. on the ground, yeah. Good lad. Good. Uh, right, now, pertaining to our lead story, in fact, Team Sky have been mopping up the cream oh, of young talent for next year. They've just signed uh, the recent winner of the Tour de l'Avenir, Egan Bernal of Colombia, super talent for three years. They've also got last year's under 23 world road race champ, who is called... Christopher Halverson. Thank you very much, of Norway. Uh, and then they've also got the winner of the recent baby Giro, Pavel Sivakov. Sivakov. That's the one. Thanks, Glad. mate. You're on fire today. No what about this side? What's that? Double stage winner of the Tour de France and King of the Mountains winner, Warren Baggy of France, was sensationally sent home from the Vuelta by his team, Sunweb. He was. For refusing to adhere to team orders. Now, initially, Sunweb did get a little bit of flack, especially on social media. But do you know what? Good, good buy. I don't think there's any one rider that should be bigger than the team. So I think they made the right decision, despite his lofty status as a bit of a superstar. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right there. And you know what, as well, you know, Team Sky kind of come under a bit of flack in this week's GCN show. Mm. But actually, one thing you've got to give them credit for is that they managed to uh, keep a cohesive team despite the talent and therefore the egos that are in they it. They are pretty well drilled, Team Sky. You've got to give them that. They are. Right. Finally, we're going to have a bit of good news about the world's greatest mammal. Alejandro Valverde is back riding his bike. Just, what, a month I after... I talking about a blue whale for a minute. <laughs> no. uh, Right, you totally throw me with, with Wales. <laughs> He's back riding his back. bike following knee surgery after he broke his kneecap in the opening time trial stage of the Tour de France. He joined his Movistar team on the first rest day, on their rest day ride at the Vuelta. I think it's brilliant. Uh, apparently attacked him after about a K and went long to get the bruising. Did he? You know what? That's new, because normally you just sit on them, wouldn't you? And now sprint him at the end. Yeah. It's going to be a big week in tech this week. Because it's Eurobike time. Woohoo! Yeah, the biggest thingamajig in, what's it called? Show? Show. The biggest show in cycling is going to be fantastic because so many brands are going to be showcasing some really cool new products. Yeah, Lloydie is out there flying the GCN flag, so he's going to be sending back daily reports. So make sure you stay tuned to YouTube and Facebook for those. However, a number of brands have already jumped the gun. Mm. Now, Shimano invited us, i.e. Simon, out to Austria to check out the new R8000 Ultegra group set. And we've got a little sneaky peek from the video right here. So we don't test products here on GCN. Many people assume that we do, but we don't. But having said that, I don't feel like I can ride this bike with this group set without at least trying to describe how it feels to perform in comparison to Dura Race. So here we go. The functionality of the Di2 derailleurs is the same. The functionality of the mechanical derailleurs is the same. The chain ring's the same, the cassette the same, and also the chain the same. So the shifting performance is absolutely on a par with Dura Race. And I wanted to check this, so I asked one of the engineers whether or not there were any design differences between the two. So perhaps the placement of the shifting pins and the ramps on the chain rings was different on Ultegra. And he said, no, they're absolutely identical. The difference comes in the materials used, which means that Dura Race ends up being lighter, so by about 500 grams or so. But the functionality of these two group sets is the same, and I think that is a really important point. Functionally, the same as Dura Race. Functionally, the same as Dura Race. Yeah, big news. Much like this, the new Giant Propel. Oh yeah. Now it was actually used, or one of them was used by Michael Matthews in the Tour de France. So we have had a bit of a sneaky peek, haven't we? But officially unveiled this week. Designed in collaboration with Ace, cool brand. Yeah, Aero Concept Engineering over a three year period. The big news is that it has disc brakes and only disc brakes. The only available option for braking is with discs. And they say that in the wind tunnel, it's right up there at the very top, up there with the fastest aero road bikes. So it does seem to me though, that we've kind of reached a little bit of a ceiling in relation to aerodynamic road bikes. I think I we mean, have. I mean, what's next? Kind of lightweight? Lightweight? 
Good thinking, mate. You heard it here first. Lightweight is the new aero, which was the new lightweight. Indeed. Uh, Rotor, well, they have announced uh, a new hub. They have. Okay, it's called the Revolver, or the Revolver. Uh, it's a completely new hub design and promises to reduce hub drag, very much like the uh, new Zip NSW does. And they look pretty cool, too. I do think they look cool, actually. Yeah, yeah nice, uh, nice little bit of innovation there from Rotor. Finally, then, for Tech of the Week, we've got the new Stages Power Meter. <sighs> this one, wait for it, dual-sided. Yep. Team Sky, uh, Stages sponsored team, have actually, what was that? Two sides. Ah, okay. Yeah, mine. T Stages sponsored Team Sky have actually been using this dual sided power meter since 2015, but it is now available to buy. And for those of you using Shimano cranks, this is one of your few available options, other than, in fact, the sh new Shimano power meter. Uh, apparently, it's going to retail for $1,300 slash euros for the Jira Ace model. Almost slash pounds these days as well. Yeah. As the Vuelta heads into its first rest day at the end of week one, it's Chris Froome who's leading the GC after he took the red jersey on stage three into Andorra, on a stage that was actually won by Vincenzo Nibli from the elite group of GC contenders. An elite group of GC contenders, minus Alberto Contador, who I think tragically lost two and a half minutes, and with it, probably any chance of a high overall finish. Yeah, you're right there, Si. But El Pistolero did go a fair way to redeeming himself with he an did. absolutely cracking 10 second bike sketch, which still shows that he's able to pull out a show-stopping performance when he needs to. Champion, entertainer. Uh, for the latest 10 second bike sketch, we have Alberto Contador. Uh, never done it before, but he's going to get a count in. Are you ready? I don't think so, but okay, okay. we will try. Three, two, one, go. He's got the two wheels going for the forks. Frame, five seconds. Saddle, bars. Two, one, stop. That is, that's pretty good. I think that might be on a par with Michal Kwiatkowski. Two wheels, almost circles. We've got the frame, the two almost, not quite the second triangle here. The bar, there's a lot of detail there for it's 10 a, seconds. It's the bike of the future because having a spokes for the wind and it's yeah, very light. Aero. Yeah, aero. but we need to change the rule because this bike is more or less in four and a half kilos. Yeah, yeah, it's under the UCI's weight limit. Yeah. Well, well done, Alberto. I think that was a very good effort indeed. Thanks for your time. Thanks. He's also hinted at his possible post cycling career recently. This Instagram post Global Triathlon Network presenter, maybe? I tell you what, I think we need a couple of expert judges on this. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the show, guys. We've got a dive by Contador. I just wondered if you oh. could uh, give us your marks out of 10. Yeah, okay, right. um, well, it's a speedy entry. Uh, seven, if I'm put on the spot. It's better seven. than you, Matt, I'm sorry. I'd hate, well, I'd hate to beat you, Matt, so I'm going to give it a six. Oh. Got to keep my friends here. Cheers, guys. What they're saying, then, is that he's better than Matt, but he's not quite up there with the, uh, the best of GCN's divers. Thanks, Mark and Heather, for that. Yeah. Hey, I tell you what, Femi Cancellara also looks like he's dabbling in triathlon now. Oh, nice swimming helmet. Mm. Very good. Anyway, away from all things try, back to the Vuelta. And the first week has actually been dominated pretty much by the breakaway. Uh, and notable performances, made in Grand Tour victories, uh, no, no less, from Mahi Mohric of UAE Team Emirates. Top G pedal extraordinaire. Indeed. Uh, also, Julian Alaphilippe of Quick Step Floors. He took his first big Grand Tour stage win. But... Chris Froome, he's looked particularly, he's not really been troubled from a GC, no, he hasn't. GC perspective. Don't be put under too much pressure as yet. No, and in fact, on stage nine, which finished on top of the Cumbre del Sol, he took his first win of the year, discounting obviously the overall of the Tour de France. Yeah, it doesn't really count, does it? Well, he didn't cross the line first, no. did he? Uh, and he actually left the entire field trailing in his wake. Smoked him, didn't he? He basically did, didn't he? Extending his overall lead over Esteban Chavez to 36 seconds and over Nico Roach, surprise package, yeah. uh, to a minute and six. Froome is looking particularly good. Meanwhile, over in France, uh, Elie Viviani continued his amazing run of form by taking out the GP West, GP West France, sorry, out sprinting Alexander Christophe. Very late lunge for the line, took that victory. But amazingly, that's four wins for Viviani now in seven days. Fair play. And in the same area, the previous day, the Women's World Tour stopped at the GP Plouet, and it was Lizzie Armistead who took her first World Tour win of the year. Perhaps showing her intentions for the World Championships coming up soon. She's clearly in stellar form, as is uh, Pauline ferrand Bravo, with whom she escaped on the last climb. Mm. Ultimately, I was printing, of course, to take that victory. Now, before we end racing news, Si, it's time for, for Eurobike. Eurobike. No, 
No? no not quite. It's time for wattage. Get it off the wall. Bazooka! <laughs> Who won? Okay, so this week's pro wattage bazooka goes to Michael Woods for third place on stage nine of the Vuelta. And in fact, not just Woodsy, his whole Cannondale Draft Pack team, because they controlled that stage with an iron fist. And you'll remember that that was literally the day after they all received that pretty worrying news about the future of their Cannondale Draft Pack squad. Yeah, a superb example of solidarity and fighting spirit from the whole yep. squad. And Rusty Woods in the end, he was third, wasn't he? And only just missed out on the victory. Oh, it Great was close, display. I thought he might get it. Anyway, the viewer, what is Bazooka? Well, that goes to Evan Stevenart for the 24 Hours of Mons cycle event and was nominated by Justin Okubu over on Facebook. Now, Sai, you've got some, well, mostly impressive stats. Well, well he's got some impressive stats. Yeah. I'm merely the messenger, yeah, sorry, Matt. Yeah. It's bonkers, okay? So he it set is. a world record. He rode 940 kilometers in 24 hours. He beat most of the teams and it, he rode, he rode at 40 kilometers an hour for 24 hours. I, I, I'm speechless. That's nuts. That's, that's an entire day. That's two sets of twelve. An twice. entire it's day of cycling at 40k now. Just going to leave beat it there. That, beat that. Pop this mic drop. Actually, we're not going to leave it there. If you want to be nominated oh, yeah. for the Wattage Bazooka next week, you can do so using the hashtag Wattage Bazooka on your favourite form of social media. It's time now for hack forward slash. Bodge of the week, and first up is this that was spotted by Alain Labrie in Quebec City. It's a bicycle with a wooden framework with Whoa. a rubber dinghy on top. Now, we were discussing this before. Is that to shelter themselves from the elements, or to do an endo into the sea and then use it as a boat? An amphibious with, bike. Yeah. Well, yeah, imagine that. You get to the end of the jetty, yank on your Swim front on. brake. Before you know it, you're lying upside down in your boat with your bike over your head. Yeah. That could actually be, it could, could be a hack. Could be a it's a bit James Bondy, isn't it? Yeah. Low five James Bond. Yeah, I think that's right. Next up, we got this one sent in by Eric Robb on Facebook. Uh, he spotted this in Evanston, Illinois in the USA. Uh, and well, he said, hashtag GCM Bodge. I say, if you want a bike that looks like an antelope, that is a hack and a half. I thought it was a, I thought it was Look a, at that. I thought it was a goat that had its legs amputated and replaced with wheels. Yeah, and that is a pretty good bit of camouflage for your bike there. Not, not to mention, probably quite comfortable. If you rode that naked, that would be like a really nice chamois, wouldn't it? What about the, I don't know, there's, there's that. What about the aerodynamic qualities too, Si? Mm. I mean, the possibilities are kind of endless. Slight risk with, um, well, in, a cr in the event of a crash, I'd say that's arguably more dangerous than disc brakes, having horns. I think so. Uh, you know, the, the risk of some kind of, um, you know, Lung puncture and yeah, like uh, it probably impalement. Probably the UCR regulations yeah. uh, quite blatantly. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is a bodge. Okay, let's yeah. move on. Yeah, we dwelled quite a long time on that, didn't we? Anyway, uh, lastly is this. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, you've got a couple of bikes basically, uh, you know, attached to the back of this transporter. Attached loosely, precariously. I mean, they've just tethered it to the hinges and just dangled it on the back, obscuring the number plate for one. I mean, that's a public health hazard, if you ask me. Imagine, every time you go around a corner, they just pendulum out, wouldn't oh, no. they? Potentially getting hit by oncoming traffic. Okay. Well, that is definitely a bodge. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Thank you, David. On Facebook. Right, make sure you keep them coming in, because yeah. we love this part of the show. Uh, any form of social media using the hashtag GCNHack. Let us be the judge. Yeah, with, with, bodge. with a new subsection of, of bikes that look like animals as well. Oh. Competition time now, and this week, I tell you what, it's a huge one again. 10 people could win a smart trainer, courtesy of Zwift. That is huge, isn't it? It's huge. Now, the reason being is that Zwift are running their super cool academy again for this year. Now, you remember that on the one side, uh, female riders can compete, uh, or rather take part initially in a program of training sessions, group rides, and also races, with the ultimate prize being a spot on the Canyon SRAM Pro Team for 2018. Mm. You can win that. Now, new for this year, i.e. next year, is the inclusion of a men's academy as well, where one rather talented cyclist could win a spot on the Dimension Data Continental Development Team. How cool is that? That is super cool. Now, whilst you have to be a male and under 22 to win a spot on the development team, the academy is open to riders of all ages, so you can challenge yourself and help the Quebec charity, because for every 10 graduates, Zwift will donate a bike. That's mega, isn't it? That's cool. Now, you don't need a smart trainer to take part, 
But they are great. Yeah, they are. Which is why Zwift are giving you the opportunity to win one. And not just one of you, 10 of you. That's right. We've got five Wahoo kicker snaps. So Wahoo being a partner with the Canyon Stram team. And five tax fluxes. Tax being a partner of the Dimension Data team. You can find the link to this competition in the description beneath this video. And do make sure as well that you enroll for the Academy because that actually starts pretty soon. It does. It does, doesn't it? Have you enrolled yet, Simon? Yeah, yeah, I've been training hard. Well, I've been training hard. I've been training as I normally do. Cracking those. Hey, we've got another prize to announce as well. The ASOS unboxing. Oh, yes. What a, what a competition segment it is this week. It's nuts. So, four lucky winners. Can I have a drum roll, please, Si? First of which, Lisanne Sansouci from Canada, uh, Nicholas Fanaras from the United States, Leif Justin from Australia, Austria. Austria, sorry, Australia, and oh, no, Austria, Austria, sorry, and uh, Nuna Flores, also from the United States of America. Well done to you four. And we have more competition results for Not you more. as well. We have more because That's don't nuts. forget the ultimate urban cycling package was oh, up yeah. for grabs. That was, of course, the Schindelhauer bike with gauge drive. It was the Senna helmet with Bluetooth. We had a lot of fun with those. And also the cyclic lights and cameras. Oh, yeah. So the winner of that package is it's another Austrian, Matt. Really? Austrian, not Australian. It's Luca Malic. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Caption competition now. And first of all, we've got to give you the results of last week because it was hotly contested. As always, we gave you this image of Alberto Contador in front of an image of himself. Not so sure anyone quite scaled the heights of our fantastic entry last week. But nevertheless, Gustavo Santos, congratulations. You get a GCN bottle with this. Ah, the good old days when GCN had me making fun of Matt instead of having me draw bicycles. <laughs> well deserved, that's pretty good. It is very I good, yeah. Like that one. Well, this week's photo to caption is this. It's Vincenzo Nibali winning stage three of the Walter. Okay, Dan is going to start us off. He sent this one remotely. Um, right, Dan. I'm a shark, but I don't bite. I nibble. If you, um, if you think you can beat that, and suggest you probably can, uh, then do put your caption entries in the comment section down below. It's as simple as that. We'll, we'll go through them and we'll, we'll pick all of them that beat Dan. So. Yeah, I, do you know what? I think Dan actually owes us a bottle for that. Yeah. We have an absolutely huge GC unboxing for you this week. Not only in quality, not only in quantity, but also the fact that it is a total exclusive. Yeah. Exclusives. Indeed. On Thursday, we've got some cool Eurobike content. In addition to that, we've got Chris Froome's X Lite Pinarello Pro ooh, Bike for you. Ooh. And on Friday, we've got an Ask GC Anything with a twist. It's from Eurobike. Ah, oh, yeah, amazing. Uh, plus Eurobike content. Yes. I would imagine. Indeed, yeah. Saturday's Pro Bike is Roman Bardet's Factor Time Trial Bike. It's a nice looking bit mm. of kit if you've seen that one. Sunday, we've got a Power to Max Factory Tour. So this is where I tried desperately to make a power meter. I soldered and yeah, everything. Yeah. I, I didn't solder the right bits, but I soldered. Uh, Sunday, we've got another unboxing. So that's three unboxings this cool. week. How cool is that? And then Monday, we're back in the maintenance set and for more maintenance. Uh, yeah, and Tuesday, uh, episode 244? Potentially is, yeah. No. 245. Three. Oh. It's the GCN it's, show. It's, it's... Okay, it's time for Extreme Corner. This week we've got a wicked little edit from the State Bicycle Company. This is Wrong Bike, Right Lines, featuring Addison Zawada. I like this. <laughs> that was nice, wasn't it? it was, I feel quite relaxed. It, was kind of, it wasn't really extreme, it was just Smooth. Flow. Right, right bike, right lines. Right everything. Yeah, not a hint of chatter. No. It's just, oh, hello. Wicked. Classy. Anyway, right. Uh, before we go, I would just like to say uh, thank you very much for all those many people that responded in the GCN Club survey. Oh, we had some really, really great stuff, really great ideas. We also had five of you, uh, chances, I'm going to call you, who yeah. said you wanted free beer. Uh, I imagine. Well, how many Lloyd, uh, email addresses has Lloydie got? I think he's got about nine. So we've got four more responses yeah, for free beer to come. Yeah. Oh, well, anyway, 
Thank you very much, anyway. Well, the Juicing Club is going to be launched in only a few weeks' time. Ooh. So make sure you register your interest at www.gcnclub.com. Yeah. Uh, before leaving this video as well, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. It's completely free. It's yeah. very simple. Just click on the globe right now. It is your one-stop shop for all things cycling. And if you want to see Dan's tour at the Vuelta of the AG Tour Mechanics Truck, which is just full of cogs, and other cool stuff, click just down here. Yeah, or for more cogs, yeah. how about that first look at the Shimano R8000 Ultegra group set? That one is just down there. And don't forget to like and share if you fancy it as well.